Hey guys, I'm Ina and welcome to Cashio Academy. Today we are going to be talking about woke cycles. We are going to cover everything from start to finish, from how to use references to how to add keyframes and common mistakes. But before we get started, I would like to say a few things. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to animate a woke cycle in After Effects using Duik. You can use any other rigging tool, but I love Duik and I use it every day. And if you're using any different rigging tools, you can still apply the things we're going to cover in this episode. So, woke cycles can look a bit scary, but they are not that hard to create as you'll see later in this tutorial. All the project files for this tutorial are going to be linked in the description below and they're free to use, but I strongly recommend you watch this tutorial first and create your own animation following our tips. So, let's get started! So first, let's import our Illustrator file into After Effects. Click on Import and then Composition Retain Layer Sizes. And now we see our character in After Effects. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure every layer is named properly and every body part has its own layer. So here I have layer 10. I'm just going to rename this quickly. We need to have a separate layer for the body, for the shoe, for the forearm, for the arm, everything needs to be in a separate layer so we can rig that and then we can animate it properly. So now let's first select all the layers by clicking on one layer and then holding Ctrl and A to select all of them. And now let's click on this icon, like the sun icon that you see over here. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna parent the layers. Now let's select all the layers of the face and then parent it to the head. You can do that by selecting the layers, holding the Swirl icon and then dropping it to the layer you want to parent it to. So the face layers need to be parented to the head and then the head needs to be parented to the neck and then the neck needs to be parented to the body. So the head needs to be parented to the forearm, the forearm to the arm and then the arm to the body. Now we're going to do the same thing for the other arm and also the legs. Okay, and now the hair needs to be parented to the head layer. So now let's hide all the layers that we won't need. In this tutorial, we're not gonna be animating the face. We are gonna hide all the face layers and we are also gonna hide the neck. We can also lock the shadow and then hide it. Now we have a clear composition and it's time to start rigging. First, select the hand layer and move the anchor point. You can do that by clicking Y on your keyboard and then move this handle so it can connect to the forearm. Click R on your keyboard to bring up the rotation and start rotating it to see if the anchor point is placed properly. Move it a little bit more, start rotating. Okay, we just need to adjust a bit more and we are ready. Looks good, so now let's move forward with the forearm. Click this little dot over here so we can isolate the layer. And now do the same thing, clicking Y and then adjusting the anchor point. Click on the dot again to see all the layers. Click R on your keyboard and start rotating. Okay, looks great. Now let's do the same with the arm. We're gonna move the anchor point and now we're gonna test it by clicking R and then rotating. We're gonna rig this character with Duik. On your Duik dashboard, click on Rigging and then select the hand, the forearm and the arm and click Auto Rig. Now we have our left hand rigged. Let's select the hand, the forearm and the arm again and then hide these layers. We're gonna do the exact same thing for the other arm. Once again, we are gonna select all the layers and hide them. Repeat the same process with the legs. Okay, perfect. Now our rig is ready. As you can see here, when you move the handle, the arm moves. So we are ready to start animating. At this point, you should have these layers in your composition. So now select all the handles for the legs and the arms and click 
P on your keyboard to bring up the position. Now click on the stopwatch here to add keyframes. We need to adjust the anchor point of the body and the head as well. Make sure the anchor point of the body is at the bottom, same with the head. So now select all the handles again and click R on your keyboard to bring rotation and click on the stopwatch again so you can see all the keyframes that you just created. Click U on your keyboard to see all the keyframes and then select all the keyframes and click on F9 to easy ease the keyframes. And now let's add keyframes for the head and for the body as well. Select both of them, click P on your keyboard, click on the stopwatch, then click R on your keyboard and click on the stopwatch. Now select all of them and click F9. And for now, we're gonna lock and hide the shadow. Let's create our walk cycle now. This is the reference that I showed you at the beginning of the video, and this is the one that we are gonna be using. So just drag and drop it to your composition and then move it to the bottom. You can click on T on your keyboard to bring the opacity and then bring it down to 50. And now it's time to create our extremes. So we're gonna be creating the contact pose, the passing pose, and then the contact again. To do this, we already have the keyframes at the start of our composition. Now we just need to adjust them a little bit based on our reference that you see here on the left. Let's first rotate the body a little bit. Click on your body and then change the rotation to three. Now let's adjust the legs. Bring the front leg to the left and then the back leg to the right and keep referring to our reference. Let's change the rotation a bit. We're gonna now adjust the arms, move the front arm a little bit so it's in the front. Then let's rotate it, move the, the back arm, rotate it, and now let's rotate the head a little bit. Okay, perfect. We might need to adjust the body. And great, we have our first pose and this is the contact pose. Since we're creating a loop, select all the layers and add keyframes. That way we're gonna make sure our animation loops. This way you're basically copy pasting all the keyframes from the start and then adding them to the end. So now go to about the, the one second mark and we're gonna start adjusting the keyframes. So we have our second contact post. Basically what we need to do here is to switch the legs. So first select your back leg and move it to the left and then select your front leg and move it to the right. That would be our contact post when he switches his legs. Now let's just the arms a little bit, move the front arm back and then move the back arm to be in the front. Let's rotate. And now let's just adjust the legs. Let's add keyframes for the head and the body. And our second pose is ready. So if we play it now, he looks like he's sliding. So we need to add the in-between poses as well. And this is what we're gonna do now. Go to somewhere in the middle of the first and the second keyframes that we have. And we are gonna now create the passing pose. And now the back leg needs to be at the center. Let's move that. Let's adjust the rotation. The front leg needs to go up. It's just the handle and then rotate it, just rotate the ankle. Now select the body, and the body needs to go up since he's switching his legs. So move the position. Now if we play the animation, it looks way better. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but that will be our second passing pose. So the back leg needs to be up this time. I'm always used to adding keyframes for everything, so it's easier for me to adjust later on. Now go somewhere in the middle of the second contact pose and the third contact pose, and now let's create the second passing pose. That will be this pose. So the back leg needs to be up, move the handle, and then adjust the rotation. The body needs to be up as well, needs to go up, and we might need to adjust the arms a little bit, but we can do that later. So if we play animation now, it looks pretty good, but it still needs some work in order to look more realistic. 
but we're done with our extreme so now it's time to polish it and make sure our animation is flawless the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the keyframes because the timing was a little bit off so just select the keyframes and move them around play with your keyframes until you're happy with the result okay great the timing looks great now let's polish the animation of the legs i'd like to adjust this pose over here because i like his foot to be rotated a bit more then just before his foot touches the ground i want to adjust the rotation and then when it does touch the ground i want to make the rotation zero so that way we can have a more clear step I'm going to do the same thing for the other leg. Just before his foot touches the ground, I'm changing the rotation and a little bit here as well. And then here it needs to be zero. Now don't forget to copy and paste this keyframe at the start too, so we can have a clear look. Okay, looks pretty good. You can play with the keyframes until you're happy with your animation. Feel free to adjust the handles a bit or rotate the body parts a bit more. So here's what I'm gonna do now. I need to offset the keyframes a bit. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want my animation to look more realistic. So I'm, I'm gonna adjust the keyframes for the legs. I'm gonna offset the arm keyframes too, especially the rotation. And I'm gonna offset the rotation of the body and the head. Check out the before and after. On the left, you can see our animation after we offset the keyframes, and on the right, you can see the animation without the offset. And the one on the left looks way better. And finally, I want to adjust the hair. I'm gonna click on the shy icon over here so I can find my hair layer. My hair layer is a shape. Notice that this is not a vector. I created a shape layer so I can adjust the path. Click on the hair layer and then click on path and add a keyframe. Now we have our first keyframe. Right here, I want to add another keyframe. I want to make the hair go down. Then it'll go up again. Then we'll go down again. And then finally, we'll copy and paste the same position as the one on the start. So this is how it looks. And it looks pretty good to me. The final thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna animate the shadow. I'm gonna add the keyframes for the position and the scale at the start of our composition. I'm gonna adjust the scale. I'm gonna adjust the scale again. Then I'm gonna copy the previous keyframes. I'm gonna do the same here and copy and paste the first keyframe. Okay, I think it looks great and our walk cycle is ready. And congratulations, your walk cycle is ready. As stated earlier in this video, you can find the project files in the description. We are adding new templates every month. So make sure to subscribe to our newsletter so you never miss a thing. Don't close this video yet since we are going to talk about the most common mistakes when creating your walk cycle. Let's look at this example. Do you notice something's off? the arms should always be opposite to the legs. So when the left leg is in front, the left arm should be back. In this example, it is the other way around, which makes the walk cycle look a bit weird. Now let's look at this example. Do you notice how unrealistic this looks? Well, this is because when you walk, you don't move every body part at the exact same time. And in order to make it realistic, you need to offset the keyframes a little bit the head keyframes need to start a bit after the body keyframes and the arms need to be offset a little bit too. If your walk cycle is part of an animated video or you want to add background, it is always better to move the background and not the character. A lot of artists animate the position of the walk cycle composition instead of the background, which makes the character look like he's sliding and not walking. Once again, guys, the project files will be in the description and you can download and use them for your own animation projects. But please like and subscribe to our channel. We upload videos every week. Thank you very much for your time and see you next week.